lot of players, it's Wobot's Tay back up in this mood. And we are looking at the, um, continuing to look at the Island of Blood box set. And now we're going into the characters and specifically the High Elf Mage and the High Elf Griffin, the General and the Griffin. So um, we're looking at two pieces for the body of the High Elf Mage here the back and the base and then the, um, the middle part. So, got my, my trusty clippers. I'm gonna clip them out. Got my clippers. Got my models. Got my liquid cement. Who could ask for anything more? Well, maybe uh, not hiking up their prices all the time. Actually, though, you know what? <clears throat> if the price hikes, if any of that go into um, making, you know, funding better ways, uh, efficient ways of making these models, then, ugh, GW, G-dub, you make these models that make me so happy, but then, then you charge me an arm and a leg. I'm already running low on my arm and leg funds. We've got enough to last us at least another month, Master. Thank you, Igor. Alright. <clears throat> so, let's look at the detail first before we get to the front part. We've got a uh, the back part of the cape here. And here we've got a little bit of sprue flash. So mold lines are the lines you see on models when you're cleaning them up. Flash is just these uh, little bits of sprue that get stuck on, I guess, that stay on when you cut them off. Flash can also be um, bits left over from the molding process that dried on. Um, you see a lot of flash on fine cast models. <coughs> on this piece, not really. Here's a, a mold line here. Yeah, so, um, High Elves as a race, the enigmatic, proud, aloof, super awesome, and yet potentially just really, you know, there's some of their, their traits, their negative traits are that just that they're so, um, they're, I, I don't know if they are the oldest race, after the old ones, if the lizard men are, <clears throat> I'm the lizard men. I, I can, can't remember which one was older, but you know they're they're like one of the oldest races in the game, and they are super, super strong and powerful. But they're they're more and more rare in in the setting of the game because they're they're dying out. Uh, they're not really widespread, so you don't see too much of them. So when they really take to the field, then it's really a big deal. And they take the field in huge numbers. So let's see how does this all fit together. What? 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 Ah. There we go. Oh, I see. I see. Ooh. Okay. It's gonna be interesting to paint. And leave that on the side now. The last part of the mage is on the griffin sprue, right over here. It's the his face, his arms, and the staff. Oh, hey, you know what? I found this um found this channel. You should check it out. It's the Joey Berry. Um, all one word. Super funny girl in England, in London, that uh, plays Warhammer and um, makes lots of Wood Elf stuff. Her project log is on Wood Elves, but super funny, very entertaining. She does lots of funny, entertaining videos. Big fan of hers. <clears throat> I'm also looking for, if, if you make videos and I haven't mentioned you yet, I'm sorry, um, leave me a comment 
uh, if, if you want me to do a shout out or whatever. Uh, especially if you do videos or battle reports or painting guides or tutorials that aim at the newer newer modelers or newer people to the hobby. I think those are really in short supply nowadays. You know, all of us all of us veterans make some pretty cool videos for each other and for the for the old uh, long beards in the hobby, but <coughs> I don't see too much helping out helping new players out. So um, Definitely let me know if that sounds like something you do on your channel, and I'll give you a shout out. Okay, so I'm going to take my Model Master liquid cement now, and uh, after I've done finish cleaning all of the mold lines, I'm going to go to the back first. So I'm looking for all the joining areas, so these pegs here that are going to slot into. recessed grooves here. The good thing about these Slada models in the Island of Blood set is that, you know, you don't really need the glue, but the risk you run is that you could be playing and then all of a sudden, you know, your model starts falling apart, comes apart, comes loose because you weren't glued together. And that ain't no good. And even though it's monopose, like the detail, it's just really awesome, fantastic. Kind of reminds me <coughs> of the Dark Elf Supreme Sorceress, the new one that came out with the, the, the single pose plastic kit. Because the face was separate from the body, separate from the hair, and this one it's the cloak. But um, really, really good model, really well detailed, it feels good, it feels solid, the joints feel solid. Uh, it's going to be a pleasure to paint up. So there we go, glued him to his base, and there you have it. Let's look at the detail on his staff, that's really awesome. The phoenix motifs, the golden... Um, it, it looks like it carved out of gold. <coughs> this ball over here in the center, experienced painters or even newbie painters who want to try it, you could paint it up like a globe um, with like oceans and continents and stuff or you could paint it up <clears throat> as like a ball of power, like crackling energy and stuff. I'm thinking now that I mention it, I might want to go, oh my dog, oh, my dog is, wants to sing songs late at night. I think I might do like a globe effect with the Warhammer map on it, so like the island of Ulthuin on the front and old world on the side of the world. That might be fun. Looks like I might have to stop filming because my dog, when he gets worked up, he loves to bark. He loves to sing. He loves to sing karaoke, or karaoke, as you mainlanders say. He loves to sing Strangers in the Night is his favorite song. Um, okay, so there's the mage. I'm gonna put him on the side. Let him dry while we take a look at the beast that is the griffin. <clears throat> Strangers in the night. So here's the griffin's body comes in. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces looks like. You've got the two halves of the, the griffin's main body. And the rider, the good stuff is that the rider's body parts come on it. Like here you, you see his one leg, the arm holding the lance, his cloak. The other side. Then here's the, the general, the lord's head with the awesome golden helmet and the lord's body <clears throat> torso upper legs then what looks like the back of the throne here and then two awesome really well sculpted wings so i'm going to cut these from the sprue and i'm going to clean them off and um, we'll come back in just a little bit Okay, hey, welcome back. We are now gonna glue together the High Elf Lord's body. So, what I've done was I dry fit, which means that I took all the pieces and I tried to put the pieces together first before I'm gonna add the glue. <clears throat> For all you newbies out there, that's uh, a word you'll, you might hear a lot, dry fitting your models. It's a great way to not glue things together that you don't wanna glue. Um, because sometimes you find that if you try to glue something together, it really doesn't turn out the way you want it to, uh, the way you expected especially if you misdo a step or something. 
So, <clears throat> we are going to glue first the High Elf Lord's head to his torso, following where he's supposed to fit just by looking at the, um, the join. And we're going to add some glue. We're also, at the same time, going to add the back <clears throat> of his seat, which looks like this. So it's got two little slots there that correspond with those two slots there. So we're going to add that on. And there we go. <clears throat> Angry looking elf guy. Now we're going to glue him into one side of the griffin's body. So I'm going to go from the right. It's got this nice little groove for him to sit in right there. And it's right next to the, the arm. I'm just going to glue all of this. And then slot him in as sure. <coughs> oh, excuse me. really great. His torso slips right into there and glues nicely to his right leg. So we're going to keep on rolling. Going in all of this, all of that, all of that. And <clears throat> we're going to be putting in corresponding side. Snaps right in there. I love the body of this griffin. It's almost, you know, this kind of like jungle lion, like jaguar or puma. <clears throat> Very sleek, not, not at all like huge and hulking and massive like the Carl Franz griffin model. Here's how it looks from both sides. I love it in mid-leap, so you can see all the musculature. Strangers in the night. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to glue in the wings. So we give that a moment to dry. Wipe away any excess glue. <coughs> and... That wing in, and the wings I notice are the hardest to uh, get right. So you really have to press press in on them. <clears throat> Just be careful that you don't press too hard, or you risk snapping something if you put too much pressure on another piece of the model. Let's accidentally snap it off by accident, and that would be. Terrible. So there you are. Let's back up just a little bit so we can see our finished model. What a figure. That looks very fantastic and so much better than the card that I grew up with. As nostalgic as I am for that, <coughs> that card stock with the little cartoon of a high elf on a griffin actually having a high alphonic griffin model I think is fantastic. So also in your little um, package of bases you're gonna find a flying base or flying stand which looks like this. Okay, ogre iron blaster piece there. And you're going to choose one you like so I'm going to choose the higher one and you'll notice that at the bottom of the griffin you've got a little peg there so that's where you would slot the peg in the top and then <clears throat> either secure it to a flying stand or it includes this monster base so you would just drill a hole into the center through here pop that in and uh, you would be done there you go so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna take my uh trusty exacto knife and just drill a little 
closer to you so you see that I'm not going to kill myself. Just applying a little bit of pressure to the center hole and twisting. Actually, what am I doing? This should not be done with an exacto knife. This should be done with the <coughs> pin vise. I don't have any handy though. So a pin vise or a drill, you just put in the center. Do the same thing. Just start drilling through the center. And this is something you maybe might want to hold on to. I wonder why they didn't just give you a flying base. It seems like flying base, getting a flying base would be so much easier than having to this thing on but um, anyway you want to be very careful if, if you're not used to working with exacto knives um, I mean I've been working with them for the last couple of years and I still have to be very careful that I don't cut myself once you get a little hole <clears throat> in there you only need a little hole which is why a pin vise or a drill would be good and then you can use your exacto knife to work the other end. Um, be careful because uh, the finer your tip is on your exacto knife, the easier it is to pop pop that baby off. And uh, I really should not be doing these kinds of videos <laughs> without the proper equipment. I don't want to teach you guys any bad, bad habits. <clears throat> but as you can see, I just kind of twisted it around like that and drills perfect hole right in the center where your flying stand would go. Glue that there. And then when you're done painting this guy, you would glue him there. For painting purposes, you might want to use something like what I showed you in my cork basing tutorial. Um, or not. If the cork base isn't, isn't something that you can find or have, then I've got a lot of people replying that they used um, you know, old paint pots with uh, the some putty on it, some blue tack or or post-it tack. So, <clears throat> whatever surface you want to use, just put some post-it tack on it, and you can secure your model however however you want, as long as you have enough post-it tack to uh, to hold it in place. This is such a massive model, though. This, as as a as a painter, I might want to just hold it on its base and on the flying base, and then just try to uh, paint it from there. In fact, I'm surprised, like I said, I'm surprised they didn't supply a flying stand <coughs> with the box set because flying, flying stands seem to be the way to go nowadays. Um, what I would suggest is going to your local hobby store if you pick this up and asking if they sell flying, flying bases. Flying bases are clear, round bases that look like this, little discs. They have a peg in the center, <clears throat> and that's where you put the end in like that. This is really the way to go. You don't have to bother with exacto knives or any of that dangerous stuff. And you just pop your guy in like that, and he's ready. He's ready to fly off to do glorious battle. That is the way to go. So, thanks for watching. This is, um, these are my last two guys that I had to build up. Painting tutorials coming soon, hopefully. Gonna try to get my ogre guy finished first. <coughs> like I said, if you're, a, uh, if you're a YouTuber out there that makes videos for specifically for, for newbies, I'd love to give you a shout out. Um, this is kind of like my newbie appreciation month, so kind of want to <clears throat> highlight videos or channels where the YouTuber really addresses beginning painting topics, beginning modeling topics, aspects of the model modeling hobby, like um, using a pin vise to pin vise to drill holes into your bases and not uh, exacto knives where you could uh, open up a vein, um, all sorts of that kind of stuff. So definitely suggest someone, suggest yourself. Uh, do whatever's and <clears throat> we will get back to the high elves hopefully after some ogre iron blaster goodness thanks for watching everybody hope you have a great day and uh, see you later